In this video, I want to show you a few ways that you can handle errors in Power BI. We're going to go through how you can handle it in Power Query using the try and otherwise expressions. And we're also going to look at how you can handle them in DAX using the if error function. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So handling errors is a concept in data or programming in general, where you purposefully use code to ensure that when an error happens, that it's dealt with properly. Now in Power BI, there are some functions that already take this into account, like the divide function, for example, where you have a third parameter that allows you to set the value in case the division returns an error. In Power BI, a single error in one line could be the root cause for issues like dashboard not refreshing or calculations not showing a value. Handling errors ensures that you can catch and fix these without breaking the whole report. So let me show you how you can do this with this demo that I prepared for you today. So we're going to start with a blank Power BI report. And what we're going to do is we're going to import a simple list of products. That is a very simple list and we're keeping it simple for a reason. So you can see here is a list of different products, the unit price for each of these products and the quantity that is sold. So I'm going to hit transform data and we're going to start in Power Query here. So I'm going to first promote the first row as headers and then we're going to start our calculations here. So let's say I want to create another column in this table to calculate the total sales for each of these products by multiplying the unit price against the quantity. So that's pretty simple, right? So we just go uh, add column, add a custom column, we're going to name this new column total sales. And from here, we're going to just use unit price multiplied by quantity like this. It's pretty simple. If you hit OK, you will see that one of the values or one of the rows have erred out. And that's absolutely normal. That's because we are trying to multiply a number value against a text value here, which is none. Now you'd normally notice this when you convert your columns into a number type, which will error out. But in cases where the data set is too big or you can't convert the data type of your columns, we can use the error handling in Power Query in our new column instead. So let's go back to the Power Query formula window here and Let's start this statement with a try like this. And then at the end of this statement, we're just going to add otherwise here. And we're just going to say, make it null. If you hit OK, you'll see that that has fixed the error. So what this does is it essentially tries the expression that you wrote. And if it returns an error, which means otherwise, it should be null, which in this case is empty. Now you can change this otherwise value to be null or zero or whatever you want really. Using the try and otherwise is a simple way to error handle Power Query formula. If you remove the otherwise part of your try and otherwise, what it will do is it will change the result of your values into a record instead of a single value. So a record is essentially a table for each of these rows giving more details about the type of error that you got in case you want to know their details. So we can click here to expand. Let's just uh, load all of the values here and let's hit OK. So you will see that it gives us a few values here, if there's an error or not, what the value is and what the actual error message is. So we can expand this error even further. Uh, let's say, uh, let's just expand everything just to see what it gives us. So you can see it gives us a message that we know 
we know this already that the error was caused by trying to multiply a number value to a text value. So this level of detail is useful when you're trying to troubleshoot multiple errors caused by multiple reasons. In our case, it's a bit of an overkill though, so we don't really need that much detail. Now that you know how to error handle in Power Query, I'm just gonna delete all of these that we've done here, and we're gonna go to our data model so we can look at how you can do this in DAX. Now, if we want to do the same thing in DAX, the same calculation, which is calculating total sales, let's try to go through the motions here. So I'm gonna create a new column right here. I'm gonna name this one total sales as well. And uh, let's try to first get the quantity value. So we're just gonna get that quantity as it is. Now, we know that without converting the column into a number type value, we won't be able to create the calculation that we want, which is to multiply it against unit price. So we need to somehow convert this into a, an integer value. So we can simply use the convert function to change this expression value into a, an integer. So in this case, we have this option here, integer. If we close that, and here we go. So you'll see that it's aired out, but instead of erring out on one row, it's aired out the whole calculated column that we've created. So you can see how frustrating it can be because it means that now it doesn't give you the option to find out which row of value has the error, it just simply errors out. So if you have more rows in your data, it can be a little bit difficult to track down which one is causing the error. So here's where we can use the if error function, which simply needs two parameters, the expression and the alternative result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write if error here at the beginning. The expression is the one that we've been doing so far and the alternative value that we want here. So let's say if it's error, then we want to change it into a zero, simple. So as you can see, now it gives us the values of the quantities that we have for each of these products, except that when it errors, instead of erroring out the whole calculated column, it just returns a zero, which is exactly what we wanted. And now from here to finish it off, you just simply multiply it against the unit price, which I don't think you need any more conversion because it's already all numbers or integers. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how you can handle errors in Power Query as well as in your DAX measures and calculated columns. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.